The common image of iron ore mining is this. Giant machinery, heat, red dirt, laden with the core ingredient for steel making. The less common image is this. Thousands of kilometres from the Pilbara in the northwest of Australia. This is Rio Tinto's operations centre near Perth Airport. And it's where the mining process starts. It's less about digging, but all about technology. As you can see, it's a large room filled with hundreds of employees in front of countless computer screens. They are hardly the image of a typical mine worker. But from here, these Rio Tinto workers remotely control most of its trains, trucks, drills and other large-scale mining machinery. The facility is led by General Manager Jenna Rennick. At any point in time here in the control room we'll have about 200 people um, operating equipment. Um, people come from a diverse range of backgrounds. We certainly have lots of people who've worked on site and in the mining industry, but we also have lots of other skill sets. Um, paramedics, pilots, nurses, um, teachers, you know, um, we, we train our people here. Throughout this operations centre, there's a constant hubbub of employees making radio calls to people on the mine sites. Jenna says some operators field up to 6,000 calls per day. Yeah, so what's happening here is, um, is on one of our mine sites, the team are operating um, a fleet of autonomous haul trucks so that the trucks have no drivers in them and they're also operating our, um, our processing plant equipment uh, for one of our sites. The giant sized trains and trucks are tracked with hundreds of sensors, cameras and GPS positioning. But from here, in the control room, it's hard to get a sense of the scale. For that, you need to get up in the air, travel the thousands of kilometres and visit an actual site. We've just arrived at the $3.1 billion Gudaidari mine, Rio's newest and most technologically advanced mine. Gudaidari began production last year and reached its capacity of 43 million tonnes in less than 12 months. Rio Tinto plans to invest a further $130 million, expanding the mine's output to 50 million tonnes. If you look at the strike length of this deposit, it's around uh, 40 kilometres, nine separate deposits. This is the first deposit and we're overlooking a section of that. It's called the Kara uh, deposit. Um, we've just ramped up to 43 million tonnes per annum, which is our nameplate capacity. We achieved that in less than 12 months, which was a fantastic achievement by the team. And I guess now we're really looking forward to all the things we've learnt from that and looking how we can uh, creep capacity further. Gudaidari uses autonomous trucks, drills, water carts and trains. There's also remote control robots like the Bunker Pro, which inspects conveyor belts for bearing failures and damage. Ore is removed from the main pit by the driverless trucks and taken to the rock crusher before moving on conveyor belts to be stockpiled. The driverless trucks are relentless, only stopping to be refuelled or serviced. About one kilometre away from the main pit, the ore has been crushed and screened by giant double-decker sieves, which reduce its size from large rocks to small pieces. It's then cleaned by the dust collector, a giant machine which offers great views of the mine. I'm on top of the dry screening facility at the Gudaidari mine where basically all of the dust from the iron ore is extracted. It's then separated into two separate conveyor belts and goes out to the stockpile yard over there before loading onto the train on my right. Matt Holtz manages Rio Tinto's 17 mines in the Pilbara. The complexity of running so many autonomous heavy machines plus the sheer size of its operations is all about efficiency to drive production up and costs down. So in terms of employees uh, at this site, it will be just over 400 people. Um, we do have a lot of autonomous uh, equipment, as I mentioned, autonomous trucks, drills, uh, also our water carts as well. Those assets are operated from our operations centre in Perth. Um, for us, in terms of the, the rates, 43 million tonnes per annum. The strip ratio here is quite low, which means we move a low portion of waste for the ore that we mine. Um, in terms of train movements per day, we would have five to six per day. So roughly in a train you would get close to 30, 30,000 tonnes. Once loaded onto a train, the iron ore has a 170 kilometre journey to the coast. Rio Tinto has 53 trains on its network. Each train has about 240 cars, extending two and a half kilometres in length. The trains are maintained in the main workshop just outside Caratha, close to the port of Dampier. 
I'm here checking out the cabin of a General Electric train, part of Rio Tinto's fleet of trains that move around the Pilbara. Given the heat, the dust, the weight of the iron ore, all elements of these locomotives and carts have to be serviced frequently. Any breakdown or blockage threatens tens of millions of dollars worth of production. The workshop is partially automated with a machining plant processing more than 130 wheel sets each day. So a round trip in our business is about a thousand kilometres, somewhere between 500 and a thousand kilometres and those trains are on the move all the time. It takes a little bit less than 40 hours to do that loop so you can imagine there's 53 trains out there all doing that each and every day. Once the train reaches the port, the ore is blended with iron ore from Rio's other mines in the Pilbara before it's loaded onto ships and sent to steelworks overseas. So our, our ports take a, a ship size from about 150,000 tonnes to about 250,000 tonnes. We load on average at about 10,000 tonnes an hour, so there's somewhere between sort of 15 and 24 hours, maybe 30 hours to load the ship, and then we can only sail those vessels at high tide. And this is the final result one of more than 2,000 shipments of iron ore that Rio Tinto send each year from its ports up here in northern Western Australia. And if the automated system works, then the royalties, the taxes and the revenue just keeps rolling in.